Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about affordable and entry-level medium format cameras. And uh, yeah, that's it. I really didn't think what else to say. All right, so if you're like me and my friends, we kind of quickly got over the uh, allure of 35 millimeter once we got more accustomed to shooting it and getting some nicer cameras. So thus, what's the next chronological thing to do uh, once you feel like you're a veteran of 35 after you've shot it for probably less than six months? Invest in a medium format camera. In all seriousness, I think it uh, makes perfectly good sense that once you get used to and accustomed to 35 millimeter, that you're gonna wanna jump to a larger negative and get sharper and uh, just overall bigger resolution images out of your camera. So if you're like me, you're gonna wanna figure out which camera suits you best and for the uh, lowest cost basically, uh, when I first was looking into medium format cameras, I wanted the lowest barrier to entry in case I didn't like it or uh, didn't really understand how to shoot it, it wouldn't have been a large investment. So I'm hoping to be 100% transparent and kind of give you uh, my thoughts on what kind of camera you're looking for if you're wanting to do a specific type of photography. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, first up we have twin lens reflex cameras. Okay, some good notable brands for twin lens reflex cameras are Yashica and Mamiya. I would stick primarily to those, but there are some outliers. A twin lens reflex camera is a type of camera with two objective lenses of the same focal length. One of the lenses is the photographic objective or taking lens, the lens that takes the picture, while the other is used for the viewfinder system, which is usually viewed from above at waist level. These cameras are typically only $100, but beware, I've seen hundreds of dead TLRs in charity shops and thrift stores that do not work. While I've actually never shot these before, they are a great step into the door into a larger negative while not breaking the bank. Plus, these definitely give you some big hipster points. So that's something to think about. Next is the Bronica SQA, or really any Bronica for that matter of fact. While being a 6x6 camera, probably the least favorite aspect ratio of medium format, the Bronica lineup of cameras, in my opinion, are all sleepers. My friend John has a 6x7 GS1, which if you can push the budget, I would highly recommend that, but that's for another video. The robust manual feel to the giant camera is something that I really enjoy and it makes it feel very hands-on while working with. The SQ series finished production in 2003, so it is a newer camera with a leaf shutter system. That means that the shutter is actually inside the lens. This means that it can synchronize it with a flash at any available shutter speed and is significantly less noisy than those with an in-body shutter. Ultimately, I think if you can get past the 6x6 square aspect ratio, I think this robust metal camera is a great way to get your toes wet. Up next is the Fuji GS645S. The Fuji GS645 series of compact medium format cameras were released in the early 1980s. The GS645 and GS645S use rangefinder type focusing, while the GS645W is scale focusing, but I'm going to be focusing on the GS645S. The camera hosts a 60mm f4 lens which translates to a 35mm in 35mm. It was made with landscapes or group pictures in mind and is a modular 645 camera. In fact, it is one of the smallest on the list. With its form factor, 60mm lens and rangefinder, I think it's a great everyday medium format camera shooting landscapes and lifestyle in your everyday life. While not being super optimal for portraits, it makes up for that in being easy to carry while you're on the go. Next, and maybe my most favorite, the Mamiya 645. These came in three major generations, the first two being manual focus film cameras and the last being uh, autofocus film and digital cameras. I'll be primarily talking about the first and the second, but that's not to say that the latter is bad by any means. I've personally owned both a 1000S and a Super. The 1000S being a first generation camera that added 1000 shutter speed to the original camera. The Super added many more accessories and features with the addition of a removable back being the most prominent. If you're interested in a more in-depth review, I have a video I did recently on my channel 
channel, so make sure you check that out. With these given accessories, the removable back and power winder, the camera sort of holds your hand, ensuring success. This camera, specifically the Super, Pro, and Pro TL might be my favorite picks for an affordable entry-level medium format choice. The 645 aspect ratio allows you to capture 15 frames in a standard roll of 120 film. The sturdy metal body and manual feel to the camera allows you to learn quick while knowing your images are being taken reliably. Up next is the Kiev 60. I've heard decent things about the Kiev 88 in almost carbon copy to the original Hasselblad 1600F camera, but I've never used it personally. The Kiev 60, however, I have. Having a similar shape as a typical 35mm SLR or like the Pentax 67, the Kiev 60 definitely has its appeal in its form factor and cheap pricing. The camera definitely feels cheaper because it is a mid-80s post-Soviet camera. We filmed a review on this camera in Chicago some time ago now and go slightly more in depth if you're interested in this specific system. Do be noted though that most of these cameras are shipping out from Russia or Ukraine or post-Soviet countries. Uh, I actually haven't found pretty much any of them shipping out of the United States, so that is something to consider uh, too. And lastly is the RB67. Okay, this one is definitely the fan favorite, and now that I think about it, it would probably be the one I recommend most out of all of these, despite my kind words to the Mamiya 645 systems. Either way, the RB67, despite its large clunkiness, might be the best, cheaper, medium format system. The entire camera is modular and can be broken down and customized to your liking. With multiple lenses, viewfinders, backs, etc., the camera can truly be turned into whatever type of camera you desire. You can even buy a 645 back to shoot through this camera. This, in my opinion, would be a perfect studio camera, but since it is so large, I would be hesitant to want to take it out into the streets or do any running gun type shooting. However, studio portraits with this camera for its price, currently at now, is tough to beat. The fact that it's also entirely manual ensures that it will likely last longer than many older cameras that rely on batteries and electronics. Ultimately, you're getting a lot of camera for not a lot of money. I think the capabilities for this and longevity make for a good investment. I'm currently actually looking into snagging one of these for our studio to use in my uh, new house. Okay, that wasn't really the last camera. I wanted to add in kind of these uh, toy cameras in as a bonus because they normally wouldn't make the list, uh, but I wanted to touch over them because they are so cheap and I think people have a lot of questions about them. So we have the Holga 120 and the Lomo Lubitel 166. Okay, I wanted to throw the Lomo Lubitel 166, I think it is, in here, uh, despite me not actually knowing much about it. But after a quick Google and YouTube search, I see that you can snag one for only $100 to $150, and it seems to take decent photos. They definitely lean into the lo-fi look that the Holga provides, but I think it's something worth noting. Either way, back to the Holga. Despite being incredibly cheap, it's tough for me to say tons of positive things about this camera. The plastic design, cheap feel, and imperfections kind of defeat the purpose of medium format to me. When I'm shooting medium format, I tend to want a uh, cleaner, more minimal grain photo. While I can certainly appreciate the aesthetic and look of the images, I think I would rather get a 35mm point and shoot camera from a charity shop that would give a similar feel. I don't know, maybe not. I guess now that I'm, the photos in here remind me so much of the band Daywave or some mid uh, 20 teen Tumblr photos. So I guess there's definitely a niche uh, for it. I don't know, maybe I would pick one of these up and shoot some portraits through it and uh, review it. If that's something you guys would be interested, let me know. Otherwise, at the end of the day, I think when you are paying for a $50 medium format camera, you're gonna get that uh, in return cheap housing, uh, plastic lens, uh, light leaks, you know, the whole nine. I think that's just something you have to kind of expect. And if you're okay with a lot of these imperfections, then I think the Holga might be a great camera for uh, the price. 
All right, so those are all the cameras I got for you guys. Drop in the comments down below if you have any affordable or entry level medium format cameras that you think are useful that I missed. With that being said, I'm sure there's gonna be cameras that I did miss, so make sure to comment them. Um, it's hard to know every camera, especially when prices fluctuate so often in this market. Otherwise, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe as it does help me out a ton. And I think that's all I got for you. So until next time, peace out.